So a lot of my observations that I had around dance culture was a lot of the reasons uh, why I started exploring my ancestry and kind of like, I, I suck at dancing, frankly, but starting to be like, hey, you know, what's the relationship between like this and martial arts? So I started studying like kind of martial arts somatics. And so I read a lot of Japanese st stuff. Mm -hmm. And the stuff that came up there was like this whole body of research around how the the white body is kind of like um, waist up. And the Japanese body is in the in the center, in the hara, in the pelvis, in the abdomen. I'm like, oh, okay, that's interesting. And I started reading into that a little bit more because they're talking about like how white, you know, it's very kind of like semi-nationalistic writing, right? So mm -hmm. grain of salt there, but they're talking about the dysregulation that comes when your sense of self is higher in your body. And I was like, wait a second, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, because, this is, you know, somebody studying trauma, like one of the effects of trauma is that you're, you get cut off from your body. And I was like, I think this is what it's talking about. So I started researching all that and put it together like that. Um, a lot of that writing around um, somatics in Japan that talked about the differences between quote unquote East and quote unquote West was actually talking about the, uh, about traumatization. When you actually look at the big picture and when you look at it through a de a decolonial lens, you start to see that like, oh, oh, they're talking about a culture being traumatized. And, you know, if you take this lens, you take this kind of nationalistic lens that I don't think is sustainable, <laughs> but import some of those ideas into decolonial lens, what you end up with is a way to understand that like, oh, the bodies and how we're affected, like colonial, colonialism itself is an embodied process. It's a somatic process more than anything. It's not an ideological, it's not a systemic process. It's a body process. And um, that kind of gave rise to this idea of there being some, something that we call, um, yeah, like cultural complex trauma. Mm -hmm. So complex trauma, you know, is like stuff that we go through um, as a body, as like a, as a, as a person, you get developmentally affected repeatedly by something. It's not like being hit by a car. It's more like being treated badly by somebody repeatedly. Mm -hmm. And so I started to be like, wait a second. So if whiteness is trauma, there might, must, it must, it's probably this form of complex trauma. Right. Right. And that's when I started looking at the, oh, okay. So then the, for whiteness, this is not just about family pain family origin stuff this is actually ancestral cultural and actually a big um piece that came in around the time uh yeah it was a conversation with a guy named tad hargrave who's working on these kind of like blog posts around dear white men i think that's what they're called yeah I, i've Let me I've talk been, a little bit of, i i know tata or sorry i know uh, tad a little bit yeah 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 so we, we talked about that and then um I think we we're talking about childhood attachment stuff. And then he mentioned something about, yeah. And then for white people, there's this abandonment from ancestral culture as parent. And I was like, Oh, wait a second. So I started putting together like the colonialism as this body process and then understanding whiteness and the ancestral attachment pain, right? Mm -hmm. Connection to ancestry being kind of attachment relation, just like a child's relationship is to their parents that's when all the gears started turning. Mm -hmm. And so um, cultural somatic is kind of really developed around that kind of framing for me. And the original way and you would use the language would have been like to call it cultural um, somatic therapy. Mm -hmm. And sometimes in closed doors, cultural somatics, so I was kind of like debating it around. And at the time I wrote the article about whiteness as cultural complex trauma, there was, um, um, I met Dare, who you've interviewed. Yeah. So I, mm -hmm. Dare came on uh, as, a, as a colleague, and I was like, oh, interesting. So we started doing a lot of research together. And if, I think even a few weeks after um, that article that got a lot of heat, because a lot of people didn't like the idea that whiteness could be trauma behavior, um, I I put out a, a new blog, another blog post is called, uh, I think, uh, uh, yeah, what it means to heal white supremacy, restoring the 
cultural nervous system, cultivating hara. So it was, it was distinctly about re, re, uh, rejuvenating your gut flora to heal white supremacy. <laughs> <laughs> but it talks about there being a cultural nervous system. So that's kind of like, uh, I think, you know, there was a big part of that pathway, I think, building mm-hmm. too. And it was also already kind of late in, in my work at the time. Um, but uh, yeah, so um, so that was that was kind of the thesis is that gut healing is essential to healing white supremacy. And that's still actually my 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 framing essentially when it comes down to it. It's like healing the your internal organs is the absolutely necessary part of white supremacy because that's actually what white supremacy is, is cutting you culturally off from your organs. <laughs> it's mm. literally what happens in terms of like how it changes your diet, how it changes your clothes, how it changes your posture, how it changes your breathing. Um, yeah. So a lot of that uh, happened and a lot of people were uh, probably upset, I think, at the time. Um, yeah. You didn't really understand what was, uh, you know, felt that if we talk about whiteness as trauma, um, you know, people get to uh, get off clean. You know what I mean? Like um, that somehow they're victim. And I think this is where the, you know, your question on the complexity of call out culture and cancel culture, the idea with come out of that. Cause mm-hmm. when I started seeing that whiteness is like trauma, I was like, well, I guess the carceral system to dispose of white people is not going to really do us a lot of good here. Now is it? Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, there, I've changed a lot since, to be honest, uh, in my, how I, I think at that time I was a lot more open and invested in a compassion based frames, but I think I'm a little bit less, I moved away from that a bit now. Um, and, and a bit more of like a, a frame that's a lot more, I think I was a little bit codependent at that time with white folks, still working through that piece of codependence. Mm. Now I'm going to frame a little bit more like, um, like be, be firm, like be kind when necessary, be firm, firm when necessary, be unkind when necessary, you know, mm. every, everything to be appropriate uh, is a little bit more my frame now, but um, that was a big part. So a lot of people were confused. Like, it's like, oh, are you, are you being nice to white people? I'm like, not really. Like people who have trauma and have power have the responsibility to look at their behavior. <laughs> it's like, yeah. you know what I mean? For me, it's like really obvious. And it's like, well, if there's a problem with white people um, having so much dysregulation and that's harming people, which is obvious, um, then we need to help white people get through that. I think where I'm a bit more different now is I also think that we have a responsibility to, in general, um, to remove people or lessen the power that people hold when they have problematic behavior. So there's like a there's there's a, there's a both end kind of process of, of course, yeah, you want to support people, uh, transform, navigate, take you know, responsibility for themselves. You know, you're there to support. And you're, you, I don't, I, I think we really don't want to coddle that, like, people who don't have the capacity to hold power should, yeah. you know? Yeah, like, right. and this yeah. is, yeah, this is kind of maybe comes into kind of the nuance about um, uh, call it culture. And one of the reasons why I think, Kind of circle around. I feel like I'm like taping, dubbing over a tape or something like that. Yeah. I think you're catching me do that yeah. purposely, but I feel like better. I feel like I'm better t- able to talk about it now. Yeah. So I rather, yeah. I, I like this. Um, is that like uh, when um, that, one of the ironies that comes out of this is that like when you're looking at a situation, I've noticed that it's actually. Uh, <laughs> there's more utility to track what we call like behaviors that generally fit under what people call personality disorder. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when I say personality disorder, it means like, as opposed to like, uh, like neurodiversity and then shape. So the DSM is really bad at actually, it's weird because the DSM is kind of like saying what personality disorder is like the canon, it's like the Bible, but it's also bad at its job. So it's not very good at it right. in itself. Um, 
know, personality disorder are like behavioral sets and patterns that are inherently maladaptive in relationships. And so inherently bad when people have power, right? Duh. Like, yeah, right, right. If you have people feel have maladaptive behaviors, you don't want them to hold a lot of power in a relationship. Should be pretty straightforward. And part of the problem with the DSM is that it starts to try to like make things like narcissism like a, a wiring issue, a neurological issue. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Let's not do that. That's a whole different lens. Uh, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like um, how you're wired, how you respond to stimulus is it's like not a useful lens when you're actually trying to vet for personality patterns. So the DSM is really horrible at that. And I think it's very oppressive for that. But Mm. um, so I'm just putting that as a caveat, but uh, personality disorders. So like things like enmeshment, uh, people pleasing, trauma bonding, codependency, uh, lying compulsively, uh, you know, grandiosity. These are the things that actually we need to track rather than necessarily, um, and then like is a racist pattern happening right so uh yeah so one of the ways that this is true is let's say like um uh let's say you have a white person a white man in power of some organization and they're getting called out for behaving a certain way right right so our um i would say nine times out of ten like i'm like oh yeah <laughs> this is gonna happen right right yeah right right but there's a, yeah there's a, there's a there's a the problem with that and looking like oh that must be racism right it must be patriarchy this is like the way that we do pattern recognition and this is how our kind of like social industrial social justice industrial complex is brokered the ability to read this pattern it teaches people how people how to read this pattern right and people make money off of that that's the reality right so uh that's the pattern recognition system that people are selling and nine times out of ten, I guess it's going to be accurate. But the one time out of ten, that's not true. It's going to be create a lot of collateral damage, right? A lot of collateral damage, right? A huge problem here. Uh, like, yeah, you know. And this is my, you know, critique of me too, and a lot of things that came out of that as well is that the pattern recognition system is a little bit like, uh, it's not. That's not the pattern recognition. Like, it. it it's like there's so many obvious pitfalls of like, let's say believing survivors outright and that like people with personality disorder patterns, it's so it's created such an easy system for those people to hijack Mm. because once they say they are a survivor or they have a claim of somebody in power, they're automatically believed and all this like support gathers around them and they can like their behaviors are just completely, completely coddled in most cases most scenarios it's actually really really tragic and frightening frankly um but again the the person like the pattern recognition system that's been sold right even with me too is like man in power claim of harm must must have been bad yeah this is the pattern yeah yeah right yeah and so what i'm saying is actually that pattern recognition system that's about patriarchy, misogyny, is actually weirdly not that effective at at dealing with patriarchy, racism, and misogyny, and stuff. Which is kind of funny. You'd think it's you think you'd be good at it, but it's actually strangely ineffective at it in this bizarre way. Because what really matters actually um, is is to be able to look at disordered patterns. I think. And this really comes into play, let's say, when you look at uh, cases like Emmett Till. He was a black boy who was uh, lynched, and, and the claim that he whistled or flirted with a white woman, that's why he got lynched, right? Yeah. By a white mob. of And how that, when you break down the story, you see that, like, the white woman, and this is what I tell people who are, in, you know, when they're, like, don't understand a critique of me too and believe survivors and all that stuff like that came through that era Mm -hmm. it's like black the black people in their experience show you that is not actually a great model (laughs) it's like i actually really don't think it's compatible when you look at that history Mm and it's like really obvious to me it's like you cannot use this model like it like there's such a historical record of like if you give people power and the ability to to create false claim to act on their hypervigilance or um, control a situation in a certain way, they do. Yeah. There's proof. We've been dealing with it. And it's like, 
or even uh, the woman in Central Park. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah right? Amy yeah. Cooper. Uh, imagine there's no video. Ah. Uh, imagine there was no video. Yeah. Yeah. Now what happens? Now how are we going to understand what happened? So, uh, what, what's, what, so what, what pattern recognition system are you going to use to solve that? Because they're going to go into like, oh, man in park, woman must must be assault right like do you yeah. know what i mean like yeah, yeah. or are we gonna go like black man and white woman must be lying like this is yeah, yeah. It's, uh, like you see like how bad like that pattern recognition starts to get when because that tape shows you that that she was in a psychotic break essentially she was divorced from reality yeah i could see that right yeah. and you can't separate i think people try to keep separating white supremacy from that kind of break from reality or these kind of disordered patternings and the, and the break from reality isn't bad it's doing something being an asshole while you're breaking from reality is the bad thing right let's this yeah. is clear but like to not understand that people don't have false claims it's like no 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 <laughs> people do this all the time yeah people do this all the time in our community people lie it's frightening people like i've had people who said things about me and i'm like literally like wow you just literally lied on social media about what i said or what i've done like literally just flat out and i have like a record of it that it's a lie and people do it anyways like mm -hmm. this is our behavior of the of our community inside it there's all so much disorder patterning and one of the things that happens is that a lot of this gets to survive when there is no vetting Right, so this is a situation. Let's say Amy Cooper, there's no tape of. Yeah, is what what, what lens do you do? Do you, use, do you misogyny, racism? Like you're trying intersectional. It's probably not going to solve that. You're probably not really going to get down to the meat of it, right? Because the moment somebody says like, "Well, I am on this kind of identity, and this is what happens to me always in society," then all of a sudden, their all their disorder patterns are protected from being exposed and being vetted. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so oh. this, this is the situation that we're in.